Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterell here with Dayon Kaij, just uh, you know, shortly removed from his co-main event against Jonathan Ramsey at Samurai MMA 9. Uh, Dayon, thank you for speaking no, with no us. No worries, man. I appreciate uh, the reaching out and stuff in your time as well, man. How are you, brother? I'm doing fantastic. It's really nice to speak with you. You've been a, a mainstay in the Canadian MMA scene for a long time, so it's really nice to see you. Thank you, man. appreciate that. appreciate the compliment, too. It's um. MMA scene is um, it's a heavy scene. We got a lot of good talent, so to be considered up there, it's it's nice. Thank you. For sure. Now, speaking of you being a mainstay, that's true. But mostly, you've been a mainstay in British Columbia and BFL Battlefield Fight League. How is it that you got arranged to uh, be loaned out, as it is, to Samurai for the co-main event for this uh, fight? Card? First of all, I didn't get loaned out by anything. Nobody owns me, so nobody owns me. Now. Okay. I choose to go where I want to go. Uh, <laughs> That's number one. I mean, it just happened, to be honest. Um, a couple of fights fell through uh, with, with BFL. Um, just a couple of it with visa issue, issues, injury issues. I had a hard time getting, getting a couple of fights. Um, I have no idea how close Samurai owner and, um, and BFL um, owner Jay, how close they are. But um, uh, Samurai used to be TKO promotion, so they were around forever. Uh, BFL's been around forever as well and stuff. So just just as, so as a result, I got um, I asked them if I can fight, and I talked to Jay because I'm always under contract. I'm always loyal to BFL because they've been so good to me. He was okay with it and stuff, and he actually helped me. They're co-promoting, or I don't want to say co-promoting because I don't know who's playing what role. Um, yeah. But yeah, it just happened to be... Um, it just, it just happened. Let me go, and I got to I got to fight, and I just want to compete. And I've, it's been a long time since I wanted to compete at uh, in Montreal. That's the capital fight city of of Canada. I always look mm -hmm. at it, and that's an honor for me to fight here. So I'm excited. Just to add on to something that you said, that I, I saw a photo on social media over the weekend. Of course, you know UFC 297 was in Toronto this yeah. past weekend. Well, BFL owner Jay Golshani and Samurai owner Daniel Lafon were both there sitting together. So I think they must have a good relationship. Oh, for sure. And, you know, they, they do and stuff with that and everything. And, 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 and as fighters, we're always looking to, to compete as much as if more promoters kind of support each other's promotion, make each other big, gives us a bigger platform to make a bigger name and move on to to bigger, bigger things. Now, tell me about your connection with Montreal. Um, I, I don't really have any connections um, outside of TriStar Gym. I, I, I came here a long, 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 long time ago. Um, I've, I've, I've done a, tra a couple of training camps and stuff, and I got beat up, and as a result, I always go where I'm a small fish. And TriStar mm -hmm. is a good place to make you feel small all the time. They always got so much talent, so much knowledge, and, and so much hunger on the mats. So I go, I... I I go where I'm inspired, and I go where I get bruises. So here I am. <laughs> and, well, that's a great attitude to have because, you know, you need that pressure. You need people who are better than you or bigger than you or more yeah. experienced than you to put you in a bad position because you don't want to be facing adversity inside the cage oh. for the first time. I mean, you have to face that before. No, and, and, and it's also that um, in, in, in a good way, lack of respect. Like when you go to a, when you're always training in my, like, you know, I own a gym. So if I train there, you're the owner. So you get a little bit of that respect. But when, when you when you when you go to TriStar and stuff, you're just another body that's fighting for Faraz's attention. As a result, nobody wants to lose, and there's this camaraderie of competition. You know what I mean? No, no, not not injury wise, but just this like this intensity in a good way that brings up the best out of you. And I think you you fight for attention, you fight for everything in TriStar in a good way. As a result, I, I love the environment. It's an educational environment that's that's only done through hard work, so it's good. And you spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, in Montreal preparing for the Samurai fight, haven't you? Yeah, it's my third time coming because I was supposed to fight originally, then the fight fell through, then it got postponed, and then it got postponed. So this is my third training camp for Samurai. So the third wow. time coming to TriStar. So no, hey, no complaints, man. Anything that forces you to make good decisions in life is a blessing in disguise. And if you don't see it that way, you're a fool, right? So Yeah, great attitude. Yeah, so it's been good. I mean, I've been blessed, man. For last year, like I said, five Five fights fell through, but as a result, I never had more training than I did in this in this last year. You know, and I'll take all the mat time that I can. I'm not saying I'm getting old, but you know, age. age you know, I'm getting so I'm trying to train as much as I can. There's this pressure. I don't have enough time. As a result, I'm training two to three times a day every day. I was going to bring that up. Something you just said in that if you take a look at your record on, say, Tapology, where they keep track of canceled fights. 
it seems like you've got, I, I'm exaggerating somewhat, but it seems like you have almost as many fights that fell through as fights that actually happened. Yeah, not how, do you keep a, how do you keep a positive attitude? I know you just mentioned briefly about staying positive, but it's got to be difficult, you know, getting ready for a fight and putting your body and your mind through it, only to have it fall through. No, I, I, I always say, when I was younger, I realized what a training camp is. What's the difference between a training camp and non-training camp? It's just mindset. Right. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. all it is. Like you, your mind's a bit different, so everything matters more. You calculate everything. You watch everything. Everything has more weight in life when, when you're in a training camp. So when I decide the more I keep my mindset to in a training camp, the better I am. Right. So I'm always idling at seventy. On my lazy days, I'm sixty. Mm -hmm. On my hard days, I'm eighty to eighty-five. But that's my idling zone, so I don't go too far off it. Um, <clears throat> So whether I'm competing or whether I'm not, it doesn't matter. I'm in the gym. I'm a martial artist. I'm not a fighter. I don't need motivation of, of a fight to get me in the gym. I need motivation of perfection that I cannot reach. As a result, I'm always motivated to go to the gym. So that's how I look at it. And I always train. It's what I want to do for a living. And it's what I love to do. So you don't need to motivate me to go in the gym. I'm drooling every, every morning, man. I'm an immigrant with a dream. So I follow it. That's amazing. And it makes a big difference too, doesn't it? Having your family there with you. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Beautiful, man. Things are good. Things are good um, uh, personally and everything. And, and, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a big battle as well as having your personal stuff um, outside the cage so you can have that bright mental support um, and everything to, to, to train. And I, and I have that figured out and, and, I, and I have that nailed as a result. I'm, I, for the first time in my life, man, I'm at peace, which is good. Um, your your child you have there with you it's a very small baby right so how does that affect you as a father and your mindset going into to fighting does that change anything at all or have you even given or is it still brand, too brand new for you to start no it's not even brand with? new man I'm Eastern European we don't we don't dwell in the, in so much of this like oh he inspires of course he inspires me life inspires me everything fucking inspires me man um, life is hard work hard for it and and have a clear set of goals and don't take your eyes off the target right. Um, mm -hmm. and he just adds more, more beautiful weight to life, just makes life more heavier. As a result, every, every moment means a bit more, you know what I mean? Which means, um, the more, when life gives, life takes, right? When he gives you something, it's going to take away. When you're getting a kid, that means you're getting a bit older. The age is coming on the, on, on the different aspects. As a result, every training camp I take so beautifully and I'm so grateful because I only got a handful left. So I'm going to enjoy every moment. So he doesn't add pressure. He just makes me enjoy things more. And that's it. I'm sure when he's old enough to watch the internet and see videos and understand, he'll see you and hear you say words like that and feel pretty happy that he's got a father with an attitude like ah, that. I don't care what he feels. Let him tell figure his own, <laughs> figure your own life out. I always joke, here's the Eastern European way. Hug him twice, hit him once, right? Beyond yeah. that, okay. figure life out, young man, right? And that's it. <laughs> Well, speaking about hugging and hitting, let's move on to Jonathan Ramsey and your yes, uh, co-main event opponent at Samurai MMA 9. Jonathan Ramsey's an up-and-coming fighter. He's he's younger than you. He's got a 5-0 and record, yeah. so there's a big experience differential. Tell me what you know about John Ramsey and what you think about him as an opponent. I don't know too much about him, to be honest, and and and, and not be, not because I'm overlooking him. Um, I found out um, when... Because I've been fighting a lot of young guys. You know what I mean? That's that that, that mm -hmm. that's all I've been finding is uh, five and O's, six and O's, and all those young and up and comers. Uh, sorry, brother, just one sec. No, it's yeah. all right. Um, I don't I don't watch too much videos of them because they they, they, they the, the the growth is is so high d during those ones, right? So for me to compare him what he was his previous fight or the fight before, it could be a completely different new fighter, right? So for me, I just kind of get a general set. He's an aggressive guy. He throws a lot of bombs. He prefers to stay striking. Um, but, you know, you never know, man. I'm, I'm known as a striker, but I spend a lot of time working on my ground game, on my MMA game and overall and stuff. And when the, when the time does come that I need it, I have it. So same as result. I don't know too much. I just know he's aggressive. Um, I know he comes to bang. I know it's a fight town. And if you got a 5-0 record in Montreal, you are legit. You are good. So his skill sets I'm not overlooking. I just don't know too much about him as a style-wise. I don't watch too much of the, my opponent's fights. I wonder how much people talk about game planning their fights. Now, I, sometimes I wonder how important that actually is. Or, you know what, at the point where you are in your life and your career, you've been doing this for so long, your skill set has evolved, you're, you're really good pretty much everywhere. So 
you know, whoever you're going to fight, it's not going to change your abilities and your capabilities. No. Well, 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 game plan just comes down to you forcing your style upon him than him forcing their style, mm -hmm. right? That's what it is. And then, and then once you figure it out, what you want to do st striking or standing, you're like, well, I want to do striking. Okay, cool. Well, how do we do that? Manage the distance. Well, through jabs and stuff. And then what do you want to land? And right hand. Then the whole game plan is getting him to move to the right hand or, or getting him to throw a certain punch that you will counter, vice versa, wrestling. So game plans is just me forcing my way to fight and having a specific tool that I want to set up and land or take down. And that's it. That's all it comes down to, right? So... As I look at it, so I don't overthink about game plans too much. It's just uh, you got to bully him, and you got to make sure it goes your way. How good are you, either in training or actually in a fight, at reading real time your opponent's tells and, and their little gifts that good. let you know what you can get away with? Very good, very good, very good. And and it, and it's and that comes down not so much of a skill set as it is composure of the mind. If your mind is calm, it thinks calmly. As a result, he can he can uh, he, he can look at um, information more logically, not emotionally. But if you <laughs> and then you get hit, motherfuck, fuck him. Now you're processing emotions, emo like emotionally, right? So now you're like, I'm gonna hit him back. But if he throws a low kick, okay, cool. Now he's setting up. Watch from and now you're processing logically. So the reason I can read is I just try to be more logical, less emotional. As a result, stay calm, and that's it. That that whole thing you just said over the past thirty seconds, it made me think it was Faraz Zahabi saying it almost. <laughs> no, 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 not even, not even close to the realm of him, man. He's a unique, he's a unique mind, and I'm just happy I, 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 I got to earn, earn his time a bit and his ear and 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 his and his eyes, and he's been helping me out and adding. It's just everybody there has been managed. So, thank you for the compliment, but can't go up there yet. I'm not there. <laughs> no worries. So, someday, someday you'll get there. Yeah, thanks, Fred. What's what does a training day look like for you in Montreal right now? I, I usually train twice a day, so I'll, so so I'll go in the mornings, um, uh, eleven to twelve. We'll do some um, sparring, and then twelve to one thirty, I'll do jujitsu. And after that, I'll come home, make food, take a nap, um, and then I'll leave again, and I'll probably do some five to six, some wrestling, um, and then six thirty to eight, I'll do jujitsu again, and then come home, shower, eat, and then go to sleep. That's pretty much, and then and then sometimes if if I don't um if I don't if I don't go to TriStar or I don't take a nap, I'll do a yoga, like and and some like some cardios and stuff. That's about it. I eat, sleep, train. Mm -hmm. That's it, brother. Yeah, and rinse, repeat. Rinse day and after repeat day. day after day, afternoon after afternoon, mornings, afternoons, and then at nights. So yeah. <laughs> You're used to fighting in front of a, 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 a British Columbia crowd who likes you. They like your fight style. Yeah. They like who you are as a person. And they, I'm sure you get a lot of cheers and a lot of support. Yeah. It's going to be different this time in Samurai where uh, the French Canadian fighter is going to be getting, I'm guessing, all the applause. Yeah. And you maybe not, not so yeah. much. Have you prepared yourself for that or does that even matter? I don't really give a shit. Number one. Number two. I, I don't. I don't. Who cares? Cheer, yell, boo, as long as you care. If you make noise, you care. If you don't make noise, you don't care. So make noise. Um, but it doesn't matter because my, my, my first 11 pro fights, I, I, I never fought in Vancouver because, because, um, we weren't allowed to do a professional MMA. So my beginning yeah, of my that, yeah. beginning of my career, that's all I fought was out that, that, that's why I have a couple of losses extras that I, that I, that I think I shouldn't have because I always fought a hometown guy and he always got the benefit of the doubt and, and, and everything. And so that's nothing new to me. And I, I understand that that's in my mind. It is his hometown. The judges are on his side. I can't make the rounds 55-45. They got to be at least 60-40 on my end to get it, um, to, to get the benefit of the judges. And I understand all that. So, But it doesn't bug me. It just, it just gets me to approach the uh, – I can't go to the judges. That's all it is. I'm approaching this fight more like I have to finish yeah. him. Can it be to the judge? And if it is, it's got to be 60 to 40 and higher on my end. Yeah, for sure. Well, Samurai MMA has very quickly become a, a fantastic organization that came from nowhere. Uh, you mentioned it's the old TKO. It's not really the old TKO, no. 
but it's, you know, got a lot of the same fan base and, and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to see where they are now and where they're going in the future. And it's also a great opportunity for you to get your face out there. So congratulations, Dehan. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is your chance now. If you have anything you'd like to say or anything you'd like to thank. Oh, I don't, I don't thank anybody publicly, only privately. So the people that I love, I tell them every day. The people I don't, they know I don't feel that way. So I got nothing to thank anybody publicly, only privately, my friend. That's where the true relationships grow. Fantastic. Well, Dehan, uh, thank you again for speaking with us. Best of luck at Samurai MMA 9, and we will talk to you later. Appreciate your time, brother. Thank you, man. Bye.